Hi, hello, 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 everybody. Oh my gosh, so freaking awesome. Guys, I'm opening up the chat right now. Ladies, say hello. I want to see who's out there. I want to, I just want to get like a, like a hi, gonna write you guys a little sticky message up here. Um, uh, Sherry, hi Sherry, so good to see you. This is super exciting. Um, guys, I want you to let me know if there's any technical difficulties. Uh, we did, Stephanie, hi Stephanie, good to see you. Is this my Stephanie D? Raven, yes, no more assholes. Raven's read the book, so awesome. Oh my God, this is so exciting. Um, we got T, hi from Calgary. This is so cool. Uh, there was a lady who messaged me today, Monique, is that, oh, sorry. Uh, put your name down, guys, because some of you, uh, here's what happened. We switched channels. So basically, a lot of you signed up on the MailChimp, and uh, and I hadn't come on to Webinar Jam yet. And um, so write your name. So I, I just just say like say your name and then say hi so I can give you like a personal shout out because I'm not seeing all of your names. Um, I'm just seeing what I entered because I kind of guesstimated when I took a look at your email addresses because I didn't ask for a name. I see Deborah, hola, hola. Um, and, and so like write your name and say hi because I want to say hi back. Um, got a message today, somebody from the UK. It was like a, like I think they're five hours ahead of us. And um, hi from Janice. And and she said, you know, um, Patty, hi Patty. I remember Patty, how are you darling? Um, yeah, so this, this uh, Kent, yes, I was gonna ask if we have some man fans on. Kristen, good to see you. Hi Kristen, Judy, hi Judy. Um, yes, Canada Student Coach, teach me from Raven. Absolutely, girlfriend, 100%. Um, oh, this is Wanda from Cambridge. Hi, Wanda. Good to see you. Super, super exciting. Do you guys want to hear one of my favorite songs? Let's see if Rebecca, hey lady, are you ready? <laughs> so funny. Rebecca, I'm all girlfriend. Uh, that's so cute. So Rebecca, let me just respond. I'm on. Uh, Rebecca's going to be joining us sitting in the waiting room. Why? Uh, oh, shoot. Guys, give me a second. I need to, um, I need to send Rebecca the link so that she can come on because she doesn't have her administrator link. So, uh, you guys might see me freeze up for a second. Um, crap. Oh, let me see what I can do here. Um, Okay, live room for Rebecca. Okay, hold on, hold tight, you guys. I'm bringing Rebecca in. Um, she's sitting in a waiting room, but she's in the wrong waiting room. She's in the test waiting room, which we did today. Um, use this link. This link, LOL. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Uh, okay, so Rebecca's going to be joining us in a second. Um, so you've seen us posting like crazy about this webinar. We are both super stoked to be doing this. Um, I hope you have your pen and paper handy because there's going to be a lot of information coming. I'm wondering if there's any more men out there uh, other than Kent. Um, so this is one of the great things about the stuff that I teach. So, you know, the first thing of writing is write what you know, right? So, um, you know, I've, I've always been talking, I mean, I give advice to men and women, but really when it comes to relationships, women lead the emotional tone. If the woman, you know, you know the saying, right? If mom ain't happy and nobody happy, um, guys, give me like a, like an amen to that. Um, if, if you agree with this, that, when you're not happy in a relationship, it is a unhappy relationship. Like, you know, seriously, if you're miserable in a relationship, then it's hard for your partner to be happy. And if it's, I mean, if it's a guy, he's just gonna go, yeah, Sherry, truth. 
if it's a guy, he's just going to go make himself happy because that was his point in the first place was just making himself happy. So you not being happy has less of an effect. But if you are in a relationship with a man, when you are not happy, then it's he's not happy. And let me tell you, there is a biological function in men to seek happiness in our faces. And there's an evolutionary purpose to that. And that reason is women are the nurturers. We're the baby carriers, right? I'm Nancy and Kitchener. Good to see you, Nancy. Uh, when we're not happy, it means the child doesn't thrive. And here's Rebecca. And Mother Nature designed us to make our species thrive. And so she infused men with the with the desire, with the need to see women happy, to see those wrinkles around their eyes. Rebecca, hi, good to see you. For some reason, Rebecca, yeah. you are yeah. sideways. Uh, so you're sideways to me, but it might be because of a split screen. So guys, we need some input from you right now. Can you let me know, are we on a split screen and is Rebecca sideways? <laughs> Somebody let me know how Rebecca looks right now. Rebecca, you look fantastic, by the way. Your lighting is spot on, girlfriend. Thank Good you. you. So if somebody can tell me if Rebecca is sideways, she's right side up. Okay, Sherry, thank you for that. Oh, good. No, it's sideways. Rebecca, okay. you're just sideways to me. Um, so, guys, because uh, this is the first time that I use Webinar Jam, uh, and I'm obviously seeing something different from you. Can you tell me what you are seeing? Do you see both me and Rebecca? Does it switch back and forth? So it is a split. So Rebecca, it's me and you, and you're not sideways. So that's fantastic. Hello, everyone, and from Cambridge. Uh, you know what, Rebecca? I thought I was going to be late, and and you were late, late come around this one. See, so I was waiting, and I didn't. Wait, know. You know, so. Oh, so that was, it was my fault. So um, here's what I figured out. You were actually still using the test link, okay. and I haven't sent you the, the link that I sent you, but yes, the live link. So uh, choppy, intermittent freezing, but it's a split screen and good. Okay, uh, so I, I thought that that might happen because we did have some visual issues when we did the test. But what about the sound? Is the sound coming through okay? Um, who, whoever said, and I'm, I'm not sure. I wish I could change this. Um, freezing a lot. Um, what about the sound? Can you let me know? For those of you that see freezing, is the sound coming through? Oh, there it is. Oh, wait, let me. Okay, so I actually just plugged into the ethernet. Sound is good. Uh, those of you that are seeing, can you let me know um, if there? Okay, sound is good, so that's amazing. Uh, because really, you don't need to see me; you do need to hear me. That's going to be the most important. It's a little point. Um, Rebecca, you're popping in and out for some reason. Yeah, I don't know if that's just me. Uh, if it's just me, so if you guys want to let me know if Rebecca's popping in and out for you too, or if that was just me. Anyways, um, so you guys, I was I was having a little bit of fun here, and I was creating some polls. Y'all are going to see a poll pop up right now, and I'm a little bit curious. I want to know how many of you are using online dating. Let me know. Yeah, so we got somebody responding already. Uh, I did, but it sucks. Not so much anymore. <laughs> yes, so this is something that I'm seeing a lot. Guys, can I tell you, as a sociologist, what we are doing tonight is super, super fascinating to me. Um, so picking your brains, getting information from you, seeing your thoughts. This is bananas. Rebecca, can you see how the poll is moving? It yeah, is so right now. Oh, that's too okay, bad. Now I can. Ah, uh, awesome. Okay, so we're kind of like so we got a little bit of rarely. We're sort of fifty fifty split between I am, I did, but it sucks. Um, so let me ask you this, guys. I'm going to go back into the chat. How many of you 
are kind of really getting tired of the whole thing and and list like one thing about it that you're really tired of like just one just go tired if you are and then one word so it could be tired and dicks um it could be tired and trolls or it could be tired and fakes uh tired and dishonesty um stephanie is yes, probably all of it <laughs> um so let me know kind of what's going on in, in your experiences. And, and, you know, the thing is, are you tired of the games? Um, yeah, and I superficial games, I see games a lot. So <sighs> this, is, this is what we're talking about tonight um, is, you know, the disrespect, the fakes, slime, <laughs> right? Uh, so you really are getting disheartened, tired of being used, absolutely. Um, so what you're coming across, all of this that I see, these are guys. These are the selfish short-term thinkers. This is what you're, it's, it's, you're picking up gum off the sidewalk and you think it's fresh gum, but it's not. Um, I am so sorry, Stephanie. <laughs> oh no, too many messages just saying that you wanna hook up. Yes, games. Ken, tired of games. Ken, are you so as a male, kinda of curious about this, but um is there like a like a do you feel like women are just looking to hook up as well? Like I know women are um kind of feeling tired of, of this this constant sort of trolling for sex that they're experiencing. Kent, what is it from a male's perspective on the other side of that fence? What is your experience when it comes to online dating that for you is annoying or is hurtful? I'd really love to get that perspective. Um, okay, so I love that. I love that we did that. Uh, gonna end this poll here. Let me set the poll. And I did this gorgeous little presentation for you guys. So I'm going to start this beautiful little presentation that we have. I'm going to teach you. Um, did you bring your pen and paper? I hope you have some pen and paper handy. So basically, Rebecca and I are going to walk you through understanding that there's a difference between guys and men that what you've been playing with what you've been experiencing what is pissing you off right now is guys because you know guys really come front and center guys are aggressive because they they just they want it and they're going to do whatever it takes to get it and I, i'm not faulting them for it like i i don't want to demonize anybody you know, one thing that I say is everybody has a right to do what they want to do. So they have a right to be guys. They have a right to be doing what they're doing. It's up to us to vet. And this is what No More Assholes is about. It's the vetting process. Um, so let's, you know, let me know. Have you guys read No More Assholes? Who has just kind of say me or I have? Um, so Sherry says, I think we experienced the same on both sides. Mm, let's ask Kent about that, because male and female brains and biology, like really like our fertility cycle is different, our exterior is different. There's a lot that is different about us. And, and one thing that I say is trying to understand the opposite sex's brain and their way of thinking is like, like eating a banana and expecting it to taste like chocolate. Like it's just, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not. A banana is a banana and chocolate is chocolate. And our brain can't quite conceptualize the way their brain functions. And the experience that I often give is they go to a place called nothing. Like when you ask a guy what he's thinking and he says, if, if he takes some, like if he says it too fast, nothing, um, he might be hiding something, but if he actually like takes a moment to go, what was in my mind? And then he says nothing. It was nothing. They have this space in this head that doesn't exist in ours where nothing literally happens. 
And that's the reason why I say it's a lot easier to get women to meditate than it is to get men because men already have this Zen place in their head where nothing happens. And we have to really work at getting to that place. Um, both males and females look into hookup. Yes, I do. I do know that that happens. Um, so, okay, let's let's get into this, you guys. Um, well, I see we got some readers. I have. Um, oh, well, men say that some women are just looking for sex. Honestly, uh, Sherry says, I, um, "What a cover, yeah." Uh, I think, you know, like sometimes really jumping into sex really super fast um, on both sides, it can be a control factor. Like if I get you sexually involved really quickly, I got you kind of thing. Um, so, you know, that is something to watch out for. Do you have a question? We'd love to address it. Uh, guys, listen to her. Uh, have insecure women who say one thing, but the one's behavior is another. Yes. Um, yes. And that is one thing too. Like, women say i want to wait i want to go slow um you know i really don't want to rush things and then they'll actually be the ones who jump the gun and i've seen this time and again and and i do believe sometimes that does come from insecurity that this fear kind of creeps up that if i don't get the getcha then i'm not going to get the man so it's it's a tough world out there guys like very very tough world and that is why we are doing this webinar tonight because I really, I wanna get you out of it. Um, I wanna get you in a relationship. I wanna get you happy. And that's what this is gonna do. So I'm gonna, I'm popping this up right now. This is like a little bit about me. Um, you know, I'm gonna be doing a lot of talking. Rebecca's babysitting. <laughs> that's what we said to you. I'm like, Rebecca, you're gonna babysit me. Um, because I'm gonna go off on a tangent. I, I might miss that people have posted things and Rebecca's gonna be like, hey Chantal, we've got a question here. I really think that we should address it. Um, and, uh, and, and because I'm gonna be jumping, like I'm gonna try and go fast from one topic to the next. I want her to catch me before I switch over to the next topic and make sure if you guys have a question that I'm going to address it before I switch gears because what you're asking might be on other people's minds and I really want to answer it. Um, so I wrote a bunch of books. Some of you have read some of them. Um, my website gets about 2,000 hits a day. If you Google when's the right time to ask for a relationship, why do guys get cold feet, what does a spiritual relationship feel like, there are a ton of questions where if I'm not number one on Google, I am page one. And if you Google Canada and dating coach, I am pretty much number one. If you just Google dating coach, and guys, uh, if you, I mean, I don't know if, if you're all on your phone, some of you are on your phones, but if you've got like a, another device beside you, just for fun, Google dating coach, and then let me know in the comments what page I came up on because I, you know, I'm always curious about analytics. This, that's what this mind does all the time. It just analyzes everything. Um, and, and fun thing about doing all this is I actually get to sort of research people's behavior by looking through my analytics. So that's really cool. 15,000 views on YouTube, um, over 2,700 downloads on iTunes. Uh, like I'm in the top 16 or something dating coaches on iTunes. Uh, if you Google my name and then you click on the news tab, you're going to see like I've been in, like I, my advice is in mainstream news over and over and over again. Um, I sold thousands of books. I've got hundreds of women who reach out to me. People, go leave a review if you write one of my books, please. Every time somebody messages me and says, "Oh, I'm reading your book. It's so great, and I've learned, and I'm doing better, and all this stuff," and I'm like, "Go leave a review." And they don't. So please go leave me a review on Amazon. It is gold, gold, gold for me because it helps me get the word out and spread the word. And I want a lot of you to get happy like Rebecca and I are. So, Rebecca, I'm going to switch it over to you. You tell us about you, please, darling. Okay. So I'm going to start right now just with how you and I met, which is a little funny. Um, Chantal and I actually, she followed me on Instagram at one point and I was in the process of vetting everybody that was following me, following me on Instagram. 
And she reached out, followed me, and then I contacted her and just had a small conversation with her about what she does and kind of touched base and then didn't really say anything. And then I started wa uh, watching her social media. And then a couple weeks later, she wrote something on one of her feeds that just really, really resonated with me. And we ended up going back and forth during a conversation um, and realizing that, with, that not only was there a ton of amazing energy between us, but also that I spoke to a lot of what she teaches. So even though she didn't coach me specifically, um, I can speak for a lot of her techniques. And we found that out more and more as, as we've continued to talk and develop a, a business relationship, but a friendship too. So I think that's really fun. Um, what else? So I have been a life coach. I have 20 years of experience. Um, on top of that, I'm the oldest of seven. I have always been in management positions or leadership positions. And funny enough, uh, from going from what I was doing before into life coaching, the way I found my path was through Airbnb. I actually run Airbnb out of my home and ended up finding that pretty much anybody that walked through my door felt safe, not only leaning on my shoulder hypothetically, but also just letting go of everything inside of them that was just tormenting them or frustrating them or that they needed some support, support over and that I was a very safe space for them. So that was what led me into the life coaching um, and doing that formally. So that's been amazing and I've loved helping so many women, especially people of all ages, shapes, cultures, um, but definitely very predom predominantly female. Um, and then I also recently this year, it was really exciting because I was featured in a PNC small business uh, event. It was called Women in Connection and it was in May. And they asked me to be one of the um, up and coming entrepreneurs in Grand Rapids that they were featuring. So that was really exciting too. Uh, I've done some public speaking at different events, Tuesdays Together, which is a creatives organization, um, also at the Women in Connection, Connection event. And then um, as far as the grief survival expert, that plays into my love story a little bit. So there's a couple of different things that happened. I actually lost my brother about six years ago. Um, he was a quadriplegic and he ended up passing from complications from his um, condition. And then exactly one year later, I was in a very serious relationship with somebody I was going to spend the rest of my life with. And on the exact same day, one year later, he passed away too. And I met him online and we had an amazing relationship, but he, that, that whole, like he was my rock, my confidant, um, and would just taught me to love myself. He helped me blossom into the person that I am now. And he was just ripped out from underneath me. So not only did I have to recover from my brother passing away, but also from uh, my significant other at the time passing away. So not only did I survive all of that, and um, my significant other, his passing was much, much harder just because it was so unexpected and because he was everything for me. Um, but I thrived afterwards too. And a lot of that was from the support and the permissions that his family gave me. But it was also really difficult navigating um, not only his passing away, but also like dating again and knowing when I was ready and what to say and how do you bring up that conversation and how much do you need to share and when do you share it, um, but also looking for somebody. I just I've always wanted to be in love and I knew that. And so I just was committed to the process of figuring all that out and have since found love again. And he is just as amazing. So that's another thing that I can excuse me, definitely speak to. Um, so yeah, and that's also how I found true love twice. And I did it both times, um, dating online, plenty of fish of all places. I am definitely a master screener. So when it comes to paying attention to uh, what's in the profiles, what's in the pictures, what's in the conversations, how much to say in return, um, how much control you give them over where you go and what you do and who does what. Um, yeah, I've been pretty much the master behind the reins of that too. So that's a little bit about me. I love it. You guys, can you, you can see the, uh, the presentation, right? Can you just give me like a little, yep, I see it. Uh, hello, chocolate lover. What's your first name, chocolate lover? Mm. Oh, you're in good company here, eh? Holy cow. 
Um, guys, give me like a, just a little yes that you can see the uh, PowerPoint presentation. I just want to make sure it's up here for you. Yes, Sherry, thank you. Uh, so this is the stuff that we're going to go over tonight. This is how we are going to blow your mind. We're going to fill you up with some awesome, awesome information. Thank you. Yes, good stuff. Yes, and thank you. Good chocolate lover. Oh my God, this is like getting a thrill every time I see that. Um, <laughs> uh, Jessica, thank you. Kent, yes, good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so if you conceive it, if you can conceive it, you can achieve it. So interspersed throughout, uh, uh, Stephanie, too small on my phone. Stephanie, you can you can do some pinching, I believe, so that you can kind of go over the lines if you can and follow along. I kind of figured it would be small on the phones, um, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, I I don't know that it has like a like a truly like mobile platform quite yet. Um, I'd be interested, though, if you took a screenshot and then emailed it to me. By the way, guys, um, you're welcome to contact me after info at canadastatingcoach.com if you have any questions that you think of later. Um, so if you can conceive it, you can achieve it. We will tell you how amazing our relationship is because we want to paint that picture. We want you to understand that there are different types, again, guys versus men all of this frustration that you're experiencing a lot of it is happening because you're dealing with guys and you know the title no more assholes like it came about because i, I hung up the phone on a guy who was freaking pulling my strings and doing the old i don't want to be with you but i don't want you to be with anybody else trick and i finally clued in to what was happening and the moment I did, I yelled in the phone. This was like, okay, listen, I'm almost 47, so there was a time when the phones were on walls. And I yelled into the phone. See, Rebecca remembers. <laughs> yelled in the phone. I went, that's not fair. Slammed on the wall, turned around, and I went, no more assholes. And literally, like, it was like this, like, my arms up in the sky. And I, I don't know what the hell happened. I had like a freaking holy, you know, holy ghost moment or something. But I could feel this energy just go through me, and it was the done energy. It like I never ever have been with somebody who has frustrated me. I've been with a greenhouse that was my next relationship after, and I married him. That was somebody who gave me a safe place to grow, mm -hmm. and I went there into this marriage which is all of the love and the support that i need to thrive it is the sunshine it's a little bit of wind because wind makes you strong um you know like like just think of like like a stock that sometimes the storm comes along but it gives you a lot of water it really quenches you and it just makes you stronger and it makes you grow more and he really gave me that um but in that moment, I just, I went no more, but, and it took a lot of courage to use that title in my book because I wasn't sure that a book with the word assholes on the cover was going to go over well in bookstores. Um, but then our culture changed and I got better with swearing. But really what I realized as I was writing this and as I was talking about this is we get upset when we are choosing from the wrong category. We can find compatible people in the guise but guys aren't ready to be men yet. Men want relationships and guys want to play. So when we find somebody in the guy section and we want to pull them into the men section, they're kicking and screaming. They don't want to go there. They're comfortable where they are. And we are increasingly getting frustrated and we're like, oh, he's such an asshole. He's not giving me what I need. And so really no more assholes means you're just done with the frustration. You are not hurting yourself anymore by choosing somebody that you're compatible with in the wrong mindset. So you're gonna vet twice. You're gonna vet for mindset. I'm gonna give you some tricks that are gonna separate the guys from men. You're gonna have 20-20 vision. It's gonna be 40-40, it's gonna be so good. And you're gonna go, oh, that's a guy. Okay, you know what? Go over there. I'm going fishing on this side over here. So you're gonna vet that way and then you're gonna look at the men and you're gonna find your compatible partner in the men. And Kent, 
I want you to understand that even though I say guy and girl, I'm also talking about, or, or, or guys and men, I'm also talking about girls and women. It does go both ways. Selfish short-term thinkers are guys and girls. Generous long-term thinkers are men and women. We do have gender differences, but when I talk about sort of that, that sort of generalized nature, that mindset, ready for a relationship, really ready to dig in, really ready to sacrifice, Yes, Sherry, bet the mindset. Um, oh, I love that, Sherry's like, uh, You know, so when you are in woman mode, you're looking for someone to lean into and give to and support and uplift and be partners with. When you are in girl mode, you just want to play and you don't want to hassle. You want, you know, come play with me and then go away. Like, I'm not ready for anything deep now. <laughs> And guys are the same way. I want to play, but like, just don't put too much pressure on me. Men are like, I want a relationship. I want something. I want someone I can work for. Men love to work. They are so hard working. It gives them purpose. It gives them satisfaction. And to have somebody who appreciates their efforts, it makes them feel worthy. So. It's so important for you to understand these two different mindsets so that you can vet the mindset and then choose the right partner in the right mindset and you will be so, so much happier. You're going to get out of this frustration that you're feeling, okay? So throughout this conversation, Rebecca and I are going to drop nuggets of how amazing our men are because we want you to have a clear picture of what you're working towards. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna teach you some science, I'm gonna teach you some biology, I'm gonna teach you some sociology, I'm gonna teach you some psychology. You are making the mistakes, but you know what? It's not your fault, you haven't been educated. I firmly believe there is a lack of education with women, with men too, and by the way, when women are disempowered, so are men. Because when you are saying all guys are dicks, all guys are assholes, the good men are over here in the corner going, I'm not, and I'm not getting a chance. And they're not getting a chance because you're falling for the bright, shiny guys, right? So guys, guys are, if, if you're following me on Facebook and on Instagram, you're seeing I put out like a flurry of posts that are like defining guys and men. And I say guys are sparkly on the outside because they want to dazzle you. They want to suck you in with that sparkle. They want you to fall for the sparkle. And by the way, have we not been told you want the spark, that initial spark? Like if you don't feel a spark on a first date, then you're not going to have a second one. You're being fooled to fall for the guys. There's so much cultural disinformation. This is why you're making dumb mistakes. You have been dumbed down. It's not your fault. You're being held back and it's disempowering you and the good men that are willing to serve you, willing to love you, willing to be devoted, willing to uplift you and put you on a pedestal. And yes, they want to put you on a pedestal. And let me tell you, girlfriend, your job is to stay on that pedestal, to not let culture make you take yourself down. Um, so, I want to back up for a second too, Chantel, because you said something a minute ago about how some of the guys are all sparkly and dazzly, and then you have all the men that are over in the corner. Um, and I just want to clarify, especially for the ladies, that that doesn't mean settling. Like, you know, we're not looking for men that still don't have all the qualities that we're looking for. It's just that the men aren't going to stand up and dance and dazzle like the guys are. So I just wanted to make that clarification for anybody. Like we're not saying that they're not going to stand out, but mm -hmm. it's going to be in a whole nother way. Right. And so men, they have, they have more light than guys do because they have more to give, right? Mm -hmm. Guys, are, guys want to take what they want. And, and you're gonna learn a little bit further on what happens when they don't get what they want. They, they take themselves out of the equation. But men are looking to give, but they're not, they're not bedazzling the world. They are careful with their energy. They are selective with their energy. And by the way, that's what makes them devoted partners. 
is that careful selection of where their energy goes. And so they, they, they keep it inside, they observe, they look to see who's worthy of their efforts and their energy and their attention and their devotion. And then they start letting it out on that particular person. So that's why I say guys are the spark, men are the slow burn. And when you unlock what's inside, it lights you up because it's all for you. It is so beautiful. It's it, it's for their loved ones, right? So it's for you, it's for their children, it's for their parents, it's for their brothers and sisters, it's for their best friends. But again, it's that close inner circle. They're not looking to sparkle their shit everywhere. They want to sparkle it on the people that they are close to because they know that that, that light will be appreciated. Um, how to know when go from so stephanie's asking um how do you know when to go from online to text to me i would say sooner rather than later like really? get to the truth okay the more time you're spending because here's the thing with women is we tend to hone in right, right. so if somebody looks interesting zoop, what happens you get the blinders on so right. i'm saying Get the truth out sooner rather than later. If that happens to you, if you can't text multiple guys at once and have multiple dates at once, then find out very quickly what this person is looking for. And right. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to have a first date and how to get that information. And I want you to ask it face to face because over text, it's very easy to lie. Mm -hmm. But ask this specific question there's going to be a clue to what the truth is. And I'm going to yeah. teach you that, okay? Um, Chocolate Lover asked something a little while ago, too. He wanted to know, was it how long ago you met your husband, I believe? Yeah, how, how long have you been married? Uh, so we, um, in about 2004 was when we met. And then he became what I call a periphery male. And holla if anyone saw my Instagram or Facebook post about the definition of a periphery male. So basically, periphery males will, they'll be interested in an attached, in a attached woman, right? So they'll see a woman, she's in a relationship or she's not ready to go into a relationship. She's holding herself back. So then they start orbiting her and just being around on the outside waiting for their mating opportunity. And so um, I believe they're very good. There are amazing men out there. It's like, um, this is what, we are opening the door to these amazing men. We are, we, we are educating you, like knowledge is power, right? So we are empowering you to see the good men now. So this is gonna be, this is, this is breakthrough content for you guys. Um, it, it should blow your mind, but it definitely should open your eyes. Uh, Rebecca, what was I saying just now? You were talking about, oh my gosh. Sure you know, has been maybe, maybe hey. Later, then you were talking about. Um, uh, well, I was answering the question, when did I meet my husband? Yeah, but it so, was right before that you were starting to talk about something else. Um, well, let me answer the question about, um, because I knew I was about to get into Stop the Bounce. And then I was answering the question about when I met my husband, which mm -hmm. was in 2004. We got together in June of 2006. Oh, and so then you met him in 2004. But how long have you been married? Uh, so we got married, I believe it was in 2014 or 2013. Okay. So we're going, I think we're going on our sixth wedding anniversary. I think we had our fifth one. And okay. the reason why I'm like uh, stumbling over dates is because I've been meditating for four years. And guys, when you get into meditation, you're gonna realize that time starts to warp, um, which is really freaking cool, but sometimes inconvenient when people <laughs> ask, right? Um, but here's what I know. We've been together since 2006. Uh, so that is 14 years at this point. Um, and we got married 2013, 2014. Guys, let me tell you, it was a leap of faith. We were still fighting and we had broken up and he you know, basically tried to get me back with a proposal, but it was like a half proposal. It was, it was a proposal of what I had said I would accept 
while we were together. But we broke up for like the third time. He he dumped me again. And um, and this time I was like, I'm getting over this guy. And he was a guy at that time to me. Um, and so he came to me and he said, and I had said to him before, like, I'm willing to take, uh, you know, like, we don't have to get married. I've already, you know, been married, got the divorce. I don't need a piece of paper. I just want a ring. I want you to call me, you know, your wife. I want us to live together. And so we broke up and then he came back and he said, I will do that. And I looked at him. I swear to God, I did it like this. I said, no, because I had changed. I knew, and we're going to do a webinar about getting over a breakup. But I had modified what my next relationship would be, and that no longer was it. What I wanted to go forward was a marriage, that piece of paper. I wanted the legality. So then he came back, and he, he did a real proposal. And so we took a leap of faith. Um, so anyway, so that answers that question. I'm going to move on because I could just go on with that forever. Um, <laughs> bounce, right? So, so bounce. Uh, Anne is actually asking clues about what men are looking for. Do you want to elaborate on that at all? Uh, so I do. I talk about this in No More Assholes. Uh, it's the seven qualities that real men want in a woman. And um, so what they're looking for is, you know, they're looking for some femininity, right? Mm -hmm. Because men want to feel like men. And so they want you to be able to turn on. Listen, I I don't wear makeup all the time. My hair isn't done all the time. I look like crap around here about 90% of the time. Like, I mean, track pants, sloppy shirts, rubber boots, my friend, we live in the country. Like, you know, hair wonky. I glam up every now and then. And it triggers my husband's brain to like, oh, I got a woman, you know, or like, you know, we were getting ready to have some sexy time. I put on the sexy underwear. He's like, yeah, it's my woman. So like a little bit of femininity makes him feel like a man. So he wants to, he wants to feel like, mm, you know, every, every now and then it does not have to be all the time. It does not, because men want to relax too, right? They don't want to have to look good all the time to always have their hair cut, to always have their your hair shaved <laughs> sorry guys but you know it's it's true we don't want to have to always you know do that all the time so they're willing to let us slide and you know they like us to let them slide but every now and then to pop it up um they want a woman who is independent and and so they want you to have your own thing they want you to be passionate about something that is outside of the relationship because they're smart and they're curious and they want their world to get a little bit bigger because they brought you into theirs. Mm -hmm. So if you have interest outside of the relationship and then you come and talk to them about it, now they feel like you've added something for them. Um, well, not only that, but so that's actually a conversation that I've had with my boyfriend um, as far as remaining independent. And that's one of the things that I love about our relationship. And I haven't really had that before. Um, and we've talked about, you know, he's mentioned to me that I'm one of the only women he's ever dated that still does my own thing and doesn't need him to be all around all the time and doesn't need to entertain me all the time and still has freedom to go out and do things independently on his end too. Um, and the beautiful thing about that is it makes us come back together after that experience and appreciate our time together and each other so much more as well. Um, but it also like it sets a standard like in the beginning I've seen myself especially and that was something I really worked to change but a lot of other women too where they keep trying to like spend so much time with a man and they stop doing the things that they like and they're you know they're just spending so much time with him that the standard they're setting is absolutely ridiculous and it's so much pressure and it's not sustainable and then at some time at some point it's going to fracture the relationship whether it's the relationship with yourself because you're spiteful because you're not being yourself because you haven't let yourself be independent or because you feel like you have to be around each other all that time and you still need that sacred space apart too yeah i'm gonna make two points here one they mm -hmm. need to miss you 
they mm-hmm. they have a need to miss you. They need to miss you. It keeps you alive and fresh for them, right? Yeah, um, and consistently available. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it keeps them on their toes too, because if there's a little bit of that, like, 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 like okay, who here knows who Gene Simmons and Sharon Tate are, right? Now, Gene Simmons has had sex with like literally thousands of women. He's got a photo album that she burned when she found it. I was I used to watch that reality show, by the way. Um, Hala, if you used to watch that too, because it was it was so funny and fascinating. But what I love most is how they raise their children. <laughs> Stephanie says yes. So she said, yes, that's right, kiss. She said a little bit of jealousy goes a long way. She wanted him to feel jealous about her. She wanted that feeling. It makes you feel a little bit more alive in the relationship. You know you love each other. You know you're devoted to each other. But a little quinge, a little fear of loss, I think is a little bit of a good thing because too much security creates a tad of complacency. Mm-hmm. And you want to keep the wheels turning. Like, like It keeps them engaged. Not Don't play games. Do not play games. But be independent enough for them to miss you, get out of their sight enough mm-hmm. for them to go, ooh, what if she goes too far? I better pull her back in, right? You want yeah. that. Um, in, in dating yeah. and relationships too, even to that point, um, one of the big things with that too is you are showing that you know how much you're worth as well. So like you are showing them that you know your value, which is also incredibly appealing because that also creates some scarcity. Like, oh, she knows she's valuable and I know she's valuable, but I can see that he or she knows that she is too. So that keeps it on the radar too. 100%. Um, And that is why my, my dating rules, those first three months, It creates that scarcity in his mind and it grows you. It creates a channel inside of his brain. And one thing I say to women is if you are not carved into his brain, you should not commit to him. Mm -hmm. So the first three months is no kissing, no sleepovers. It creates that sense, that pull, that desire to pull you in. Um, But another thing that men want is to feel needed. So as independent as you are, there must be something that only he can do for you. Mm -hmm. So whether it's only he can kill spiders for you, like this is, this is your job, baby. You're my spider killer. Like you're the one I call when we got to get that spider off the ceiling before it falls on my head. Um, how about them online when, when, uh, chatting online, easy, Stephanie, um, if their first response, is a low level response. That's your first vet. If it doesn't say anything about your profile, that's your first vet. All he did was respond to your picture and not who you are. Now, when you vet that way, it's going to be a much smaller pool. Mm-hmm. And then you chat and you set up a meeting and then you're going to go have your first date and then you give your advice about that first date a little bit down the road. So stopping the bounce is narrowing the field down considerably using a no kissing for three months rule so that you're further vetting for character so that when you finally do commit to someone this is going to be someone you're actually going to stay with because you know so much you appreciate so much you have so much between you you've ascertained that there's so much compatibility you've decided you want a relationship with each other and then you go forward into the relationship so following those steps means that when you get in your next relationship, the likelihood of bouncing out, especially guys, by the way, you come to me and you get some relationship advice so that you don't fall back into old patterns. So finding the right partner and then doing the right things means there will be no bounce back out. It means you will stay. Um, Guy said, hey, just waved. He said I was grumpy. Yeah, goodbye, bye, block, bye-bye, bye, 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 bye. When I was, when I started learning how to screen really, really well, if you couldn't say more than a couple words to me, just delete and block, delete and block, because who has time for all that? Like, you're on a mission right now, and you don't owe them anything, and if that's all that they're going to invest, why do you even want to entertain that? 
best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. If the mm -hmm. initial communication is low quality, expect a low quality person. Mm -hmm. Look for the diamond in the rough. The diamond in the rough is looking for someone who is going to appreciate the fact that he's trying to stand out and not with the sparkle, with his intellect, with his attention, with the fact that he read the words in your profile, found something he liked about it and said something about that. So that you start with there, then you get that coffee date and then you have the conversation I'm gonna tell you about, okay? We're gonna calm your mind and soul. I want to shrink a part of your brain. Well, I want you to shrink it, literally. It's called the amygdala. This is your fight or flight. There's a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety going on right now and you're vomiting that into your dating life. We're gonna teach you how to reduce that. We're gonna help you change your energy so that when you are sitting across from the right person, you're not infecting him with negative energy and turning him off, okay? Uh, and then we're gonna get you manifesting your soulmate. Uh, I want you to understand that like attracts like. I also want you to understand that what's going on in your head is what's ending up in your path. So the more clear you are about who you're looking for, the better chance you have of finding your ideal partner. And I'm gonna teach you why and how to use a no kissing for three months rule. So let's tell you just a little bit. Well, I told you about um, <laughs> my love story, which was I was married, <clears throat> I, was, I was happy enough, but really, what I had was safety. I did not have intimacy. Um, my husband at the time, we were sleeping in separate bedrooms. It had already been a few years that we hadn't slept in the same bed. We had sex about once every two months. And even then it was like me going, oh, it's been two months. Maybe we should be having sex now. Uh, sometimes we'd have sex and we didn't even kiss before, during, or after. It was just like, you know, let's, let's do it so we know we did it kind of thing. And then every six months I'd have a conversation with him and it always happened in the bathroom. I'd always be sitting, not like on the, on the toilet, you know, doing something, but like on the toilet lid with him sitting across from me on the edge of the tub. I don't know why it always happened in there, but we'd always have this conversation of like, what's wrong with us? What's wrong with our relationship? Why aren't we? more into each other? Why do we lead such separate lives? And we really did live separate lives within the same house and we were very much roommates. And then I met my husband, we met in a bar. Um, there was something about me that clicked second time. And, and he, he went, oh, I got to go see that girl again. And because I worked in a bar, it was easy for him. So then he came back, um, I think the next night and said, can I take you out to dinner? I said, no, I'm married and wearing my ring. And I don't, it's funny why guys, males don't see wedding rings. Um, and and he just kind of said to himself, well, you know, she's cool. And I just want to hang around her. So then he, he did. And so he just orbited me for two and a half years until I realized that I was giving up intimacy for safety. And I developed all this chemistry with Dennis. And I really feel he's my soulmate. Um, how do you even get a date? <laughs> Uh, we are going to have a different webinar about that one. Um, and I'm going to touch on that a little bit in this one. So, yeah, so then I mean, we, really, we really did have like a sort of a courtship period. Um, and then I ultimately left, like I had just had a conversation where I realized that what I just told you was what was happening. And the moment I realized that was the moment I sent the moment I decided I'm getting a divorce and as soon as I saw my husband that afternoon I said we need to get a divorce and and that was it and we got a divorce and then I ended up with my husband and you know it was 10 years of fighting and four years of bliss um what about you Rebecca tell us your love story tell us tell us about <laughs> tell us about this one this gentleman that we see here yeah, Tell okay. us about this one and about meeting him and about when your first kiss happened and how okay. long that took. So we actually, um, I'm going to back up a little bit from that because uh, so my significant other had passed away and then I went and I had met him online as well. And then I went back online once I was ready to date and I made sure I was good and ready because I didn't want to bring any baggage into dating again. I wanted to make sure that I was in the right headspace and doing it for the right reasons. 
Um, ended up in a rebound relationship. Obviously, mine was a little more of a unique um, circumstance with him passing away, but I ended up in a rebound relationship for about a year. And I mean, it was not good. I mean, he did all the things. He uh, It was a long distance relationship, which I had already been in, so that wasn't a problem. But lots of lying, lots of insecurity, lots of trust issues. Um, not even trust issues. He just wasn't trustworthy. And I like, uh, I heard somebody say at one time he had great uh, personality, but horrible character, which hit the nail right on the head and got to a point where one day I just kind of woke up and had an epiphany. And I was like, what are you doing? Like, this is ridiculous. You let, went from something that was amazing, lost that. Now you're in this, what are you doing? And I just cut it off cold Turkey. And within a week, uh, was back online, knew what I was looking for, wasn't going to make the same mistakes, and was, I am the type of person that I don't have any problem talking to several people at once, just talking or going on dates, and then as soon as I want to pursue something, then I will narrow it down. Um, so I ended up going out on a date with my current guy um, within a week and a half, and we met at the zoo. He was very chivalrous, chivalrous um, polite, like no pressure. His body language spoke of confidence, but he didn't try to, you know, move in on me at any time. He didn't make me feel uncomfortable. He did everything perfectly and it was not an act. It was very sincere and he was fun loving and he was funny. And just from day one, like I, I knew. And the funny thing was, is because I had already gone through that rebound relationship, I found myself being, and I think rightfully so, being very protective because I'm an, also a person that wears my heart on my sleeve. So even if you look into my eyes, you can see exactly what I'm thinking or feeling. So I was also a little guarded with that because I didn't want him to know until I was ready to commit. And I wanted to be sure before I was ready to commit. So we actually went on one day a week for weeks. Um, and he didn't even think I liked him. So that was kind of the funny part once we ended up talking down the road, because even though we had a good time and we would laugh and smile and do fun things together, there wasn't a lot of physical contact, not even holding hands or like leaning towards each other or anything like that. So he didn't even think I liked him like that. And, but the thing that I did from my end is it was hard, still hard to communicate some things verbally. So what I would do is after a date, I would always text him and tell him like, thank you. I had an amazing time. I appreciate, you know, I would point out different things I appreciated about him. So I was still feeding that into him, even though my body language wasn't completely backing it up. And so, yeah, we just kept seeing each other on a weekly basis and uh, it was, about three months before we kissed too. We hung out all the time and I just wanted to make sure. And he was doing, he kept showing up. He was consistent. He was amazing. He was patient and um, he was willing to wait. And more than anything, that was what really spoke to me because I knew I was worth waiting for, but he realized that too. So it was about three months. I remember we were out at a park one night. We actually got locked in the park because we were there. It closed at um, sunset and we ended up staying after sunset and we got locked in the park. So we were there and we ended up kissing that night. And I mean, everything's just been amazing from day one. But once we did kiss, like obviously we just knew and I couldn't say more about him. He's so amazing and compassionate and supportive and funny and centers me and everything else. So yeah, I wish everybody could find that type of person for themselves, but it really took getting into that space myself and also knowing what I was looking for to find him. Yeah, two super important keys. Um, you know, it's, it's almost like a quantum physics kind of thing is when you realize you deserve it, when you know what you're going for, when you say to yourself, I'm ready for this and I'm deserving of it and I know what I want. Boom. There it is, girlfriend. Like it's it's incredible. Uh, Deborah, I just like 
to or from my me traveling. So yes, we do winter life or active adventures. Yes, but when you're choosing your profile picture, um, don't don't choose a sexy one. Like I I know that you think that having a sexy picture will attract more opportunity, but really what it does is it attracts more dick because you woke up the dick and. When you wake up the dick, you're waking up the guy, right? And guys are basically trolling through online profiles with their dick in their hand, looking for the one that makes it move. And so they're the ones that are hitting you up over and over again. And they're the ones that are like, I'm going to say what I need to say in order to put my dick there. But men are online looking for somebody who moves their mind and their heart. They're looking for someone to share their life with. So when you choose a profile picture that has you doing something that you'd want to do with your future partner if he's thinking i i'm looking for a woman that i can do x with i can, I can do this particular activity with right if that's a big dead so you you know like a little bit of makeup a little bit of curves but don't over sexualize in your profile picture because that is your first impression and your first impression should be i want a man not a guy uh, oh, Deborah, cutting out. Anybody else experiencing cutting out? Um, so, and I like I, Deborah says, how long chatting? Uh, oh, cutting out, cutting out. Oh, shoot, you guys. No, no sound. No sound. Let me, let's give it a moment. Me or no? Can you guys hear Rebecca? What's going on? What's so happening? I've been able to hear Chantel the whole time. Right. I think it froze for me. Um, let's just maybe, uh, nine o'clock, maybe a lot of people got online right now. I'm not sure. Uh, mm -hmm. guys, is it still freezing for you? <clears throat> I hope, uh, cutting out periodically. Um, how about now? Just reconnected us by now. Okay. So, you know what? I think like we were, like I am rural, which means, um, that uh hit the reconnect button oh there's a reconnect button uh that's what oh, i did you know, I had it on our screen because i know what she's talking about when we did our test earlier i had a reconnect button but we don't have oh, it on the administrators yay. look at this friends helping friends i love it you guys love it love it thank you thank you for helping each other here um okay so let's get into this lesson uh so kissing creates an aphrodisiac this is where the science gets important about dating. I want you to think about your dating experience. I want you to think about what happened after you had your first kiss, regardless of when you had it. I want you to think about what happened next. After you have that first kiss, if someone else showed interest, did you say, no, I'm seeing somebody? Think about that. So guys, tell me say yeah this is what i do when i have a first kiss and somebody else wants to go out with me i say no i'm seeing somebody if that's you say yeah that's me or amen or been there um you know basically the reason why you did that regardless of when that first kiss happened if it happened on a first date a second date a third date one month in two months in when you have that first kiss, the blinders come on. And anybody else trying to get in, you do this. Nope. 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 I'm seeing someone. And you shut them down. Um, why do you do that? Why does that happen? Why would it happen so soon? Why would you tell other people, I'm not interested, if you've kissed somebody on a first, second, or third date, why do you commit to a stranger? Let me give you a little bit of biology. Everybody's lip secretes a chemical that doesn't do anything to them until it comes in contact with another set of lips. The combination that's created at that point is an aphrodisiac. It's called phenylethylamine, and it excites both of you, which is why kissing precedes sex. But there's a secondary function that only happens in the female brain, not in the male brain. Because you'll notice guys don't really do the same thing. Like they'll kiss you, but then you still feel like you're working so hard and trying to reel them in. They want to get that kiss in because they know once they do, 
they have reeled you in. This is why they want that kiss sooner rather than later. This is why they're going for the kiss. This is why this culture says kiss on the first, second, or third date. But who is leading the culture right now? Is, is it a patriarchal culture <laughs> or is it a matriarchal culture? If it's a patriarchal culture and it's saying kiss on the first, second, or third date, question that, my loves. Question mm -hmm. that big time. Why? Why are you feeling that you should? Why are you feeling like if you don't, you're losing opportunities? That's a lie. It is a big fat mm -hmm. cultural lie. Men will wait. Guys, whoa, this is the first vetting process. I'm getting shivers right now in my head because I know, <laughs> I know I'm blowing minds right now. I'm blowing my own. Sure. So, yeah. So phenyl ethylamine has a secondary function in the female brain only. What is that secondary function? It tells her she has completed a vetting process. Now, here's a little bit more biology here. We are mammals, are we not, right? What happens in the animal world? Males put on a display, mm -hmm. females observe, select the strongest mate, right? That is how it should be for us. We've been conditioned to not vet. I'm teaching you today to vet. I'm teaching you to be natural. I'm teaching you to go back to your natural order. I'm teaching you to be the right kind of animal, ladies. I know, I fucking love science. I know, my blown. I know, I know. <laughs> I know. This is what needs to get out there. This is what needs to get out there. This is my... Can you hear me pounding on the drums, lady? <laughs> okay. Oh, so, I want to ask, Annie asked a question a second ago, and I think it's pretty interesting. Yeah. She said, can a man turn into a guy or were they always a guy and I just okay. missed the signs? Do you have any feedback on that? I have been a girl. I spent three years in an abusive relationship because we seek what's familiar, even if it's wrong for us. I left, I left an abusive home. I picked an abusive partner. After three years, I said, get the fuck out. And if you're not going my turn, I'm calling the cops. And then I spent the next year playing, having fun. I didn't want a relationship. I needed some time to myself, but I didn't want to isolate myself. I didn't want to not go out. I didn't want to not have fun. I didn't want to not explore myself sexually. I was 21. So what I, I was actually 20. So from 20 to 21, I spent a full year in girl mode. I, I just, and, and I, I pick up guys in bar. Literally, I go up to a guy and I'd be like, hey, you're cute. You want to come to my place? No penetration. And I make it clear before we even kiss. Well, sometimes we think, you know, anyways, play, play mode, right? Just full on play mode. But before they came to my house, I said, I want to bring you to my place. I want to play with you. I want to have fun. I want to take out the handcuffs, but no penetration. And let me tell you, ladies, I left one male in the parking lot of the bar, one, because he was like, I'm not coming back and not, not putting it in. And I was like, then you're not coming over. That's it. Simple as that. Um, so you can, you listen, a guy will become a man if he falls for you. Right. So say you, you're out there, you're dating, you come across somebody and, and, and you go on that first date and you use the script that I'm going to give you, which is going to let you know what's in front of you. Hey, I just want to let you know, I've had my playtime. It was a lot of fun, but I'm really looking for a relationship now. I'm looking for that person I'm going to settle down with. I'm going to buy a house with. I'm going to have kids with. What, what, what are your goals? Right. Lay them out. That. You know, I'm going to do these things with. And then you go, what about you? What are you looking for? And ladies, I want you to do this face to face because I want you to read him. If he goes, I'm looking for a relationship too, like that, that is your answer. If he goes, well, uh, uh, that is your answer. That was a guy. Mm -hmm. So men no, listen, males, Ken, I, I, can't. <laughs> I want you to chime in here. Tell us this. Do you not know when you are sitting across from a woman, 
on a first date, what your reason is for sitting there. Do you not know that you're sitting there because you want to play or you're sitting there because you want a relationship? Ladies, I'm telling you, they know when they're sitting across from you why they are there. So you ask them, you ask them face to face and you look for a pause. If it's a pause, it's a guy. If it's direct and it's, I want a relationship, that's a man. So you can now pursue this with this person and see if there's compatibility, see if this is somebody you would actually want to have a life with. And if he says, I'm not ready, if he mm -hmm. says, I'm not looking for a relationship, you Less need fun. to leave the words coming out of his yeah. mouth 100%. So I almost wonder if what Anne was asking is if a man were, will ever revert to being a guy once he becomes a man, or is he basically he trying can. to pass himself off as a man and he was a guy all along? There are there are people who are deceitful, but no kissing for three months will usually weed them out. So you'll, mm -hmm. <laughs> listen, we have psychopaths, right? We just do. We have like a small percentage of our species that are just full on bastards. And they will say they will do anything and they will lie like it's the truth and they are so hard to read, but they're a small percentage. Don't be so afraid, but don't be afraid to put your truth out there too. And do believe the answers that come to you. So if there's a pause, that's a guy, that's your clue, do not move forward. Say, you know, I, I, I really see, I see that you're not as ready as I am. I wish you all the best. I'm going to keep looking and, and this was great, but we're not going to keep seeing each other because we're not in the same mindset, right? right? No harm done. Um, but no kissing for three months. We'll also weed out the ones that are being dishonest, trying to say anything they can to get in your pants, which some of them will do. But the mm -hmm. thing is they're selfish short-term thinkers, which is what a guy is. And so selfish short-term thinkers want what they want when they want it. So they might lie to you in the moment and they might keep that for a month or two. But I have seen this time and again at the two and a half mark, <laughs> at the two and a half month mark, gone. Because yeah. they know you are serious. You are putting your money where your mouth is. And there are a lot of women who say, I want to go slow. I want to take it slow. I want to see. But then they're jumping the gun. So mm -hmm. they're not being truthful either right they're saying they are a woman but they're still in girl mode um so did i cover all this i'm just checking the slide over your other dating coach oh my okay guys guys guys, <laughs> um, guys. somebody else just had a question to it said should you say what you're seeking on your online dating profile what do you what do you have to say about that <laughs> You can, right? Um, but here's the thing, when you're writing your online dating profile, don't, this is about you. This is who you are, right? Mm -hmm. It's not so much about what you're looking for because a man will look at your description of who you are and mm -hmm. say, I feel a compatibility there, right? And what you're looking for is somebody that you mesh with, that you're, so this is, see this? Puzzle pieces, right? So you're looking for somebody who's going to be a puzzle piece with you. So don't make your profile about so much what you want. Make it about who you are. And then you can add, like after I like to do this, you know, things, this is me, this is this is my personality, this is my life. And then say, you know, in, in my perfect relationship, I see us having this kind of a weekend. Hmm. And you put that word relationship in there like that. It, most people will assume, and the thing is, on your online profile, you've already checked a box that mm -hmm. said you're looking for a hookup, or you're looking yeah. for a friend, or you're looking for a relationship, right? So you don't need to say it again. No. The one who's looking for a relationship looked for the woman who checked the relationship box. But when you have your first date, state what you're looking for. I found my playtime, it was a lot of fun, but I'm really looking for a relationship, somebody to hit these life goals with. And then you go, what about you? And you just 
gently toss it back to them. You look at their reaction. You look at how quickly that answer comes. That tells you if this is a guy or a man. And you move on from there with knowledge and insight. Yeah. Um, Rebecca? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say something. Um, no, I'm just agreeing. I was actually remembering the time when I've had those conversations and how completely obvious it is when it comes across their face. Yeah. It, and it really is. But the mm -hmm. thing is, it, like, we see pretty boys online. We see good on paper. Mm -hmm. And we start building castles in the sky. Yeah. So then we overlook those red flags because we want what we think they are. Mm -hmm. Instead of being real about what's in front of us. So, and this is this is why no kissing for three months. This doesn't just slow him down. It slows you down. Trust me, if this is somebody that you like, it is hard, girlfriend. It is hard. I know I've been there. I've done it. So when I told you that my husband broke up with me a, a third time, um, and, and I said, you know what? That's it. And he broke up with me before. So there was two, uh, there was two times when I, um, when I dated other people, but each of those two times, I did the no kissing for three months rule. And so basically, I actually dated really super amazing people that I would have kissed, which means I would have committed, which means I would have changed my trajectory because once I started kissing someone else, I'm not sure my husband would have won me back. But I didn't end up kissing those two other people, which means I am where I am today. With if anybody has seen my property, I live in paradise. Horse and buggies go by in front of my window when I'm writing my books. Um, my husband loves me. We haven't had a fight in four years because he grew with me. Um, men, when you give them that safe place, when you stop fighting, they level up in your love. He keeps loving me more. He is a man, not a guy, which means he's, he's a, a selfless, generous person. He uplifts me. He puts me on a pedestal. He's looking at what I'm doing right now, how I am pushing myself forward. And this, guys, I, I, I talked to my psychic, and the last two times she said, you're going to be on TV. You're going to be going places. You're going to be meeting, like, uh, she used a word for celebrity, but it wasn't the celebrity word, um, notoriety. She says, I see notoriety. Um, and then, you know, like she sees all of these things and I see them too. This is what I'm driving towards, getting this information and putting it out there and pushing it far, 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 because I want to change the culture, not just you, my loves. You're going to be part of my culture shift. You're going to be like the first wave coming out there. Um, and so, and, and the thing is, I mean, just yesterday, he's like, you know, this this doesn't help me because it's going to take you away from me. But I want you to be happy. I'm I'm, I'm let you know not letting really because we don't use the word let in our relationship. But he's he's making himself okay with losing access to me if I you know go do all these things because he just wants me to be happy. And this is what a man is. And I, I kind of think I got derailed again. Um, <laughs> so you have that first date. So now we're, we're going to talk about your first date. So we talked about online. We talked about, you know, posting the right kind of picture. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah, I know. I'm very passionate, aren't I? Ooh, I'm on fire. Um, so we talked about the right picture that's going to attract a man, not a guy, what to put in your profile, how soon to get a face-to-face -face meeting. Don't spend all your time on text. Get him face-to-face. -face. And if he doesn't have time to get face-to-face, -face, guess what? He doesn't have time it's, in general. <laughs> he doesn't have time. He's not interested enough. On to the next. Bye bye This leaves you open for the right person to make a date. Because guess what, girlfriend? Men make an effort. Guys don't. Guys are lazy. So again, that, 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 that. Um, now you have him in front of you. Now you've had some chit-chat. You, you know you kind of want to start seeing where this goes. There's enough up there for you. There's some meat on the bone. Now you really want to know, should I bite, right? So then you say, had my fun, blah, blah, blah. What about you? Watch his reaction. See, he says, uh, I'm looking for a relationship, right? Now you know to take the next step. So the next step is, I really want you to know that 
I really want to be sure that the next relationship I get into is the right relationship. Girls, I'm giving you a script right now. I want you to know that I want to make sure that the next relationship I get into is the right relationship for me. I'm, I'm done with just casual dating, with just dating, with getting in a relationship and then bouncing back out again. I want to be sure the next one is the right one. And so what I'm doing is using a no kissing for three months rule because here's the thing and he's gonna be like what no kissing right because <laughs> we're designed to wait our oh, fraternity yeah. <laughs> takes a break because we are designed to wait mother nature said i'm gonna put the brakes on you girlfriends so that you can vet men are seed planters right so there's going to be a little bit of pushback because mother nature made them want to plant the seed but you are going to put the brakes on because you are empowered to do so because now you are smart and knowledgeable and you're going to say here's the thing kissing creates a chemical that's an aphrodisiac which is why kissing precedes sex but it also has a secondary effect on the female brain it tells us we've completed a many process even if the person we kiss is a complete stranger wow i don't want to kiss a stranger because i don't want to commit to a stranger <laughs> how can he argue with that how listen the guy who argues with that the person who who doesn't just sit back and go that makes sense the person who does not do that is the person who does not respect you and your goals that's the person who cares about his penis more than he cares about your heart and your mind and your soul again there's a vet right there off to the side boyfriend you're not gonna be in this house right so he gets a dismissal you're looking for the one who goes that makes sense you're looking for the one who is on board with a no kissing for three months rule okay now no kissing for three months is also no sleepovers why because you want him to go home and think about you now we're getting back into the brain here when you okay i want to i want to get a little bit of feedback from you guys have you ever been so hooked on a thought you can't get it out of your head and it just spins on a thought over and over and over again give me an amen give me a yes give me a like oh god yes that's happened to me like i was you know i i'm gonna tell you my mind was like on it was like a screech over and over again over a particular person for a number of years it took so long for me to get this person out of my head why does it happen? Because the more you think of someone, the more it carves itself into your brain. I want you to think about the Grand Canyon. Yeah, I got some yeses here. Hell yes, yes, right? And so how did the Grand Canyon happen? It was a trickle, then it was a river, and the water kept going. The thought, the same repetitive thing over and over and over, carved this immense chasm into the earth. When you send him home at the end of the day if he does not think of you so much that he carves you into his brain that is somebody that you do not commit to i don't want you to commit to anyone who has not carved you into his brain there's another vet right there if he doesn't come to a point where he can't get you out of his mind where he's not pursuing you because he needs to see you because he can't get you off his mind off he goes you don't want that one. Um, implemented through with Will already. He's down with it. Jerry, however, we aren't seeing each other that often, but we chat every day via text. Um, Sherry, there should be a reason for that. If it's because he works a lot, it's because he's got daddy duties, like, like get into his life. It's, if it's because he's busy with like responsibilities of being a man, then you know what? It's, it's worth the time because if he's, you know, right now focusing on things he should focus on and you respect what he's focusing on, that's a worthy person. Um, Chocolate, we're trying to get someone out of my head. You told me he wants to stay friends. I still date other women. Chocolate, Lover, you cut him off. Mm -hmm. Done. Done. You need to you need to disengage your brain so that you can open it up to the right person. Okay? Sherry says guy or man. Uh, you know, it. so look at his behavior, Sherry. Uh, is he hardworking? Does he take care of his responsibilities? Is that where his time is being taken up, right? Um, and, and this no kissing for three months rule gives him time to get to know you. It gives you time to get to know him. 
And in the beginning, you might not get a lot of his time, but the more he falls for you, the more he will begin making space, the more he will begin allocating time to you. So give it time to develop. This no kissing, this is, this is a period to see how things develop. It doesn't have to be all, like everything all at once, right? How does it morph? How does it change? Does it get better and better and better and better or worse and worse and worse and worse, right? So if it's getting worse, this is the one for you. If it's getting better, that's a good thing. And then let him bring you into his life. When he invites you to stuff, go, go and observe. Are his words matching, you know, what he says? Like if he says, uh, I'm a really good father, right? How is that playing out? Like, do you actually see him being a good dad? If he says, I'm very responsible, then watch how he spends his money and then look at his lifestyle too. Because if he's spending a lot of money, but he's got a shit car and a shit home, he's not responsible. Um, if he says, I'm a really hardworking person, but then you notice that he spends a lot of time at home not doing much, right? So look for mismatches during that three month period. This, you, he's kind of on probation here a little bit, right? So, so really like watch what's going on and be willing to be clear to him because men are not imposing. Men don't want to pull you out of your life. They want to observe you living your life. They want to see what you do that makes you happy. They don't want you to sacrifice yourself for them. And so when he says, you know, um, you know, can I see you this weekend? And you say, maybe Friday, you know, his brain says, she's not all that into me. So if you want to see him, if he says, can I see you this weekend? Don't say maybe a day, pick a day, pick a time, pick a convenience let him know what that door is so that he can now take it and make a plan with you, okay? Now, meditation is your friend. I have a YouTube channel. People, if you got some pen and paper here, take some notes. Go to YouTube, type in my name, Chantal Hyde. You're going to find my channel. I have a playlist called Let's Meditate. The first video is a tutorial. Let me tell you what the tutorial is. Can you sit in a chair? Can you close your eyes? Can you wear headphones? That's it. You can meditate. Anything that makes you think that meditation is hard, push that out of your head. It's really super easy. Now here's something that I've done with that list. The music, those first tunes, you're gonna see there's like a bunch of, of tunes initially by Rich Pendlebury. This is a really cute story. This was my first kiss when I was 10 years old. And then, you know, you move to different provinces, all this stuff, yada, yada, yada. Fast forward to like uh, 30 some years later and our paths cross again. And he kept the picture and the letter that I sent him. And he is now making music for us. And when I say for us, it's for me and it's for you. Sometimes like, I'll be like, okay, like I'm, I'm kind of shifting gears. Like the last one he made was a... Um, uh, what do you call it? A Chaco bouncing, which I haven't posted yet. I've just been using it myself because he didn't, he didn't give me the YouTube, um, you know, video for it yet. He just gave me the, the MP3, but, um, he makes music for us. And this is binaural beats. Now, if you ever see people with electrodes attached to their heads beside a monitor, you see the wavy lines, your brain is emitting frequency. And those wavy lines are frequencies. So depending on what you're doing with your head, is how your frequency is playing out, right? So alpha, beta, theta, I'm sure you've heard those words. Now, when you meditate, obviously you go into a certain wavelength, right? A certain frequency. Binaural beats is music that, it, it, that is infused with frequency. You need to wear headphones because the frequency happens inside your head. So one ear has one frequency, the other ear has a different frequency that are mixing inside your head pulling your brain into that meditative frequency faster. Busy mamas, I got your back. I know life is hectic. You gotta work, you gotta mother, you gotta be friends, you gotta be decent with your baby daddy. You're being pulled in all these different directions. You're feeling overwhelmed. You know, some of you have, have children that are like difficult. I, I know, I know, I know, I work with you all the time. This is why the first tracks on there are binaural beats 
made by my friend Rich Pendlebury just for us. Now, I do this because I know you have little time and I know you need to be efficient. So the first track on there is a 10 minute love frequency. What are we talking about tonight? Attracting love, getting you into that love relationship that you're looking for, right? So sit down with the headphones for 10 minutes a day and listen to that love frequency. Close your eyes, get some quiet time. Tell the kids, mama needs 10 minutes. Listen, mama, take 10 minutes. You deserve 10 minutes. Find 10 minutes. Give yourself 10 minutes. These 10 minutes will save your love life. I cannot stress this enough. I cannot stress this enough. You are single, and I'm telling you, meditate. If you got in a relationship, I would tell you to meditate. Stephanie says the loved one is the best. Stephanie's already on board. Listen, when you guys, anybody who comes in my orbit, I'm like, Love frequency, 10 minutes daily, do it, right? So you need to do this regardless of where you are in life, in your relationship. This will calm your mind. Ladies, can, can somebody tell me I'm going to start tonight or tomorrow? If, if I can convince somebody to start tonight or tomorrow, this whole chat is worth it because you will you will begin a path to finding that love so quickly it will blow your mind. You will calm your mind so quickly it will blow your mind. And doing this before you get in a relationship means you need me less once you get in that relationship because you start getting answers, you know what to do, you don't react to him. If he comes up to you with his blitzing amygdala trying to poke the fight out of you because that's what we do and we don't understand how to deal with our own feelings and want to exteriorize everything and blame things on other people and go, I feel shitty. Who's closest to me? Must be you. You don't play that game and it takes two people to fight. So if one person isn't fighting, guess what? You're not fighting. So again, this comes back to no more bounce. So first of all, you're reducing your anxiety, your stress, your fear which means you're not grabbing onto somebody because you're afraid of losing them, therefore not pulling in the wrong person. And you're reducing your will to fight, which means when you do pull in that right person, he can't get you to fight, which means you are laying the foundation of an amazing, amazing, amazing relationship. I would not be married today if I had not started meditating. It saved my relationship. Cannot stress this enough. Please, please love us. Church, yes. So meditation, prayer, right? So I actually infuse prayer into my meditations. Thank you, goodness. Thank you for giving me. Um, thank you for all that's on my path. And when you calm your mind, you fine tune your antenna. And what this does is increase your manifesting powers, which takes me to the next step, which is clarity is key. So I'm giving you some homework tonight. So you've got a couple things. You've got that 10 minute meditation start doing that. This is homework, okay? Second piece of homework is writing your perfect man list. So what you're going to do is you're going to make it long. I don't care how many pieces of paper you fill in with all of your requirements, everything that you're looking for. I want you to create a big, long piece of paper that has everything you want in a relationship. And I want you to be open to knocking a few of those off when you do meet that perfect partner because we all require compromise. The best relationship is one with compromise, right? So my husband sees me on this trajectory to be on the news in Toronto on a regular basis, which means I won't be here in the morning to make him breakfast like I do, right? And he already, he already is compromising. He sees a future where I won't be home as much. And he's telling himself, that's okay. I'm gonna give up my, my special times with her. I'm gonna see her less because I want her to be happy. He's compromising some of his in order to give me some of mine, right? So be open to compromise, but obviously don't compromise on your, what do you call them, deal breakers. You do not wanna compromise on you know, is respectful, never compromise on that. Um, so just make it long enough that if there's some things that he isn't, that's okay. Um, I want you to put this list up on the fridge because you're gonna see something on TV, you're gonna have a conversation with a friend and you're gonna think, oh, I want that too. 
go ahead and add it to your list. This is an evolving list, just like you were an evolving person. But I want it to be nearby. I want it to be somewhere that you see regularly because I want this list to infuse your psyche and you are meditating, which means you're fine tuning your antenna. And listen, how many people, and I want I want to hear this. Yes, vision board. I got three chocolate lovers. Um, make a list, Stephanie. Hell yes, make a list. Um, how many of you have had this experience? You're thinking about a friend and then whoop, phone goes off and there's your friend. You're like, oh my God, I was just thinking about you. Can I get like a man? Can I get like, yeah, totally happened. Oh my God, psychic moments. Like, tell me if this has happened for you where you've thought of something. Um, all the qualities. There's no number of qualities. There's limitless qualities. Write them all down. So we, are, we have these abilities to put things in our path, right? Deborah, all the time. Stephanie, yes, right? This happens to me all the time. I know when someone's thinking about me. I know when someone is thinking about me. Um, and, and, you know, this is kind of why I'm a little bit selective in my coaching practice, too, because I plug into the people that I work with, and I know when they're upset, um, and that that's kind of like a little bit uncomfortable for me. And I'm like, oh, we got to fix some shit here. So I want you to meditate so you fine tune your antenna. I want you to write this list because if you if you don't know what you're looking for, if you're confused, well, guess what? You're attracting somebody who's confused, and now you're both confused, and you don't know if you're compatible. So make that list manifest that person. Make every detail positive. So think about your last relationship and like last relationships, what did you have that you want to keep seeing? Relationship. Um, you know, what do you, what do you want to keep seeing? Put that on the list. Think about your last relationships and think about what you didn't like. Turn it into a positive, put that positive on the list. Okay. Do you guys get that? Journaling and scripting. Yes. But on the fridge, on the fridge. I want it to be somewhere where it's kind of, even if you're not seeing it, there's a periphery action going on. You know what I mean? I want it to infuse you. So guys, these are the lessons for tonight. Um, and we are like an hour and a half in. So uh, we answered a whole <laughs> bunch of questions. We're gonna answer a couple more, right? Uh, so I'm going I'm to take a few more questions. You guys got some more questions? Looking at your face, can you even like that, Rebecca? <laughs> Super cute. I know. Did I blow your minds? Did I not blow your minds? I know we're going to get a few more questions in. So Was there anything waiting? else you guys wanted her to elaborate on through that whole discussion yeah. or something that wasn't addressed yet? So, guys, I want to turn you on to working with Rebecca and I. And this is why I want to turn you on to this. I want you to understand that getting in the right relationship is a process. And it is a step-by-step -step process. And I like to hold your hand because it's a lot easier for me to tell you what the next step is. I got this message from this guy you know, to help you clarify something. This is what he wrote me. Should I respond? What does this mean? What should I write back? It's a lot easier for me to give you the next step than it is to help you undo the step you did that kind of made things fall apart a little bit, whether it was going down the wrong path or whether it was, it was unnecessarily severing a tie with somebody who's actually going to be really, really good for you. Um, and there's a lot of confusion in the dating world. So really what you're getting into when you get into coaching is you're getting into peace of mind and you're getting into forward momentum and you're getting into a relationship with somebody who is hardworking, supportive, puts you above themselves, wants you to be happy and does whatever they can to help you propel. And let me tell you, when you are in the right relationship, you change. So I'm going to tell you a little story. And this is the woman that I'm actually working with, creating these videos that we're making. She, like her family is, is, um, is called Styles Creative. 
Her father started this production company decades ago. He makes documentary videos for Global News, for CBC, for the big, big stations, prime time TV documentaries. His daughter is taking over the business. She's making me her first project because her friend bought No More Assholes. She watched her friend transform, and I'm using her word. She said, I watched her transform, and then she got into this relationship with this amazing guy. He is ideal. He is perfect. She can't find any fault with him whatsoever. And so she had a meeting with me, and she's telling me all this. And she said, it wasn't for lack of trying. You know, she was out there, she was dating, she was meeting people, she was getting relationships, they were bad relationships, she was getting herself back out, starting the whole process over and over and over and over. And I know you're here because that's what you've done too, is going online, finding somebody, going somewhere, finding somebody, but it is the wrong person one after another. And she watched her friend do that. But then her friend got a copy of No More Assholes, started doing the work inside, and you know who she met was a guy who read a copy of Fix That Shit. Talk about manifestation. Like, talk about manifestation. The universe will align for you when you follow my steps. So she read No More Assholes. She's doing what's inside. She goes to a singles event. Now, this is supposed to be where, like, other people go, right? Well, guess what? Only one other person went. This man, that was it. There was only two of them. They had no choice but to talk to each other. And so this was a few months ago. She's basically moved into his place, in and all, right? The cat's moved into. He and the thing is, I met this person and and I met him at one of my speed dating events. And I was like, I really hope he hires me because I can still sell this man. Because he just made such a great impression. Hardworking, sense of humor, super kind, very generous. He just like like just this beautiful energy coming off of him of kindness and compassion and devotion and willingness and he was just looking for that one special lady and he found the one who read no more assholes and it's such a beautiful story because he read he read the book that helped him understand a little bit more about how a relationship could work she read the book about how to find the right partner and they came together and they have, I haven't seen it, but what I've heard is it is absolutely beautiful. And this is what I want for you. I want to get you out of the crap. I want to get you offline. I want to get you away from the trolls. I want to get you away from the guys and I want to get you with a man. And it is an investment because you lighten your load tremendously. You find a partner. You find someone who's going to go through the tough stuff with you. Listen, the first hurdle, this no kissing for three months rule, that's your first hurdle. The one who can make it through that with you has shown you that he can overcome the hurdle that is, you got to get to know me. He is showing you that he's a worthy person. But when we don't know how to really understand a man, we can push them away. And so that's one of the ways, like sometimes we keep picking guys, that's one of the ways that we keep getting into the wrong relationship. But one of the ways that we keep from getting into the right one is not understanding men properly, not being able to read them properly, not giving them the right cues, right? So no kissing for three months does not mean no affection for three months. Affection is very important because it communicates to their brain that you are actually into them. And one thing that I say is it doesn't matter what you say. What matters is what you do. And so you can tell a man a million, million, million times that you're great, you're fantastic, you're so good, I love what you're doing, uh, I really appreciate you. But if you don't also touch him, he's gonna start telling himself, she's actually not into me. She's, she's not interested. 
and maybe I shouldn't be investing my time anymore. And he's going to start losing interest. And now he's going to start sliding away. And then there's going to be those hiccups too, right? Because the more we get into somebody, the more we like them, the more we start getting afraid of losing them. And fear, I don't know if you know this as well as I do, but fear makes you a little bit nuts. And it, it can it can freeze you up and keep you from doing things, or it can make you vomit and make you do the wrong things. And I had a ton of negative relationship experiences, and that fear really made me do the wrong things. And it made me fight with my husband for 10 years. You know, I was I was lucky that he stayed for, for that long because you know, there was a lot of negative things that happened in our relationship and everybody suffered because of it. It wasn't just me, it wasn't just him. You know, there was people around us who suffered as well. Um, and so I want, I want you to avoid that. I don't, you know, you might not find somebody who's gonna have as much tenacity as he does. Yeah, this might be a very, very good man, but he might not have as much patience as my husband does. So I want to help you get over those hurdles quickly. I want to help you understand the things that are going on in your mind. I want you to understand the things that are going on in his mind. I want to give you the words to help you communicate that you are, you're there and you're in. And, and I want you to decode his words so that you can understand how much he's in as well. Rebecca? Yeah. You have something to say about this? Because you're with a really good man, too. Like, what does it do for you? What does having a really good man for me do? Yeah. Uh, help me soar in life. <laughs> so he is just... I think the thing that I appreciate about him the most is the consistency. Like, we obviously love each other a ton. <clears throat> Excuse me. We love each other a ton. We enjoy spending time with each other, exploring things with each other. But I think the thing that really that I love the most about the relationship is the consistency in it, in it, because I never have to guess at anything. I don't guess how I don't have to guess how he's going to react to something. I don't going I don't have to guess about what he thinks about something. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to anticipate it. I just live my life and he lives his life and we live our lives. And if we need to talk about something, we talk about something. And if it's not that big a deal, then we say it's not that big a deal. Um, but we're also very like-minded in the way that we approach a lot of things when it comes to how we communicate and what is important for each of us to know about the other person. And we've been like that from day one because we set that standard. But the consistency is the beautiful thing because there's just, there's no guesswork and there's, there's no manipulation or any of that in the relationship. I can always count on him as a person, but also to just do what he just always does. Yeah. And I, I love that you said count on him because it just triggered a memory in my brain. Um, like my husband works 100 hours a week mm -hmm. and you know, and, and that's that's kind of part of who he is because we had a little conversation recently and he's, you know, he's, he's been running a business since the day I met him. Like when I first met him, he was he was in business with his dad, but he was starting to pull away because he wasn't getting the acknowledgement that like his, his it was a really negative experience for him. Mm -hmm. He started to open his own business and, you know, he grew it over the course of these past 14 years. And it's, it's become a very successful business and there's a lot of money in the business. And so we were having a conversation. He's like, you know, like I'm starting to think about selling the business, like or these, this avenue or that avenue or that avenue to get my money out of the business. Mm -hmm. And then one of the things he said is, you know, I literally, I can just stop working and then just keep paying myself and basically retire. And he kind of did this and he goes, but what would I do with my time? Like mm -hmm. he just wants to work. It's just part of who he is mm -hmm. and what he is, which is a beautiful thing. But the moment, the moment, the moment I go to him and I say, baby, I need you, drops everything mm -hmm. instant yep. and comes to him and makes that time. He doesn't say, no, baby, hold on. I need to 
there is no no baby when I say I need mm -hmm. you. And that's what a man is. It's, you know, he puts you first. Yeah. He puts you first. It is, guys, who here has listened to a Pink Floyd or, or seen the cover of a Pink Floyd album? And you see, it's the Dark Side of the Moon album, and it's like a dark background. And you see that that triangle, the crystal pyramid, mm -hmm. and you have white light that comes in on the one side, and then there's a rainbow that comes out the other. This is what it's like. You yep. are the pyramid. They are the white light. And out of you comes this, it makes me want to cry when I talk about it. Listen, do you see this? Eight books in four years. I say, baby, thank you for the content, by the way. Right. <laughs> but, you know, like in four years, I wrote eight books and built a website that gets 2,000 visitors a day and built a YouTube channel that has 15,000 views so far. And, 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 you know what I'm saying? There is so much that I accomplished in four years' time. It is insane, the output coming out of me. You've heard me talk all night tonight. The amount of knowledge and information that I have picked up because my focus is crystal clear. I am super sharp. Why? Because my mind is at ease. There is zero, I'm telling you, zero relationship angst. There's no preoccupation with mm -hmm. my relationship. All I have in my relationship is love and support. Yeah. That is an affection and cuddles and kisses. Guys, we make out every day. Every morning we make out, usually every evening. There's like a little bit of making out that goes on. I bring him lunch and supper, like I work from home. So I can, you know, I make my meal, I make his at the same time, I go bring it to him. And more often than not, when like I'll go put it in his office on his desk and then I go into the shop because we both work from home. There's a shop in the backyard, which by the way, I manifested this whole place because I was I was running this so bad. I, I kind of think I made it happen, but I don't tell him that very often. And so I'll go put his his dinner on his desk and I go into the shop and I go, baby, I brought you lunch, baby, I brought you supper. And he stops when he sees me coming. And if he's feeling lovey-dovey, which is about 90% of the time, I get a super sweet kiss. So that's like four super sweet makeup kisses in a day. Now you might get three, you might get two, but you're at least going to get one if that's something that you like. We both, we're both very affectionate, so that's definitely something that we like. In the right relationship, if you love affection, you will get so much affection. In the right relationship, whatever your love language is, if it's affection, quality time, words of affirmation, physical affection, did I say affection? Gifts, uh, <laughs> access to heaven. I like it so much I said it twice. Yeah. What your love language is, is what you will get because you cultivate understanding, right? And so you understand each other so much that you give each other what you need, you uplift each other, you help each other. Ladies, what is your dream? Do you know it yet? In the right relationship, it will come to you. If you know what your dream is and you're struggling to achieve it, in the right relationship, you have rocket fuel. It will happen. There are so many beautiful, incredible aspects that you have in this relationship. And, you know, this is part of the reason why Rebecca and I do this together because we are in it, we have it, we experience it. We know how to bring you to it. We've both been there, done that. So, you know, again, repeating what's familiar, even if it's wrong for you. So my first, you know, real relationship after I left home was abusive. After that, I picked a guy who basically admitted he started dating me. We were together for two years. And he told me, he said, I started dating you because I was trying to make this other girl jealous. She was actually the one that I wanted to be with. Um, and then there was the one who let me know actually a few weeks after we started dating. If I had met that other girl before you, 
I would have been with her. Like all these guys who always had their eye on the next girl, even while they were with me. And I'm desperately trying to keep their attention, desperately trying to be enough, to do enough and never feeling like I was enough. And now in the right relationship, not only are you enough, but you are you times 10. You are you fully explored. You are you unleashed. And this is how this business came about because I got into the right relationship and I made it good, which meant I opened up all the goodness that was inside of it, like cracking an egg open. And then what came out was my full, full, full potential. So when I say getting coaching is an investment, I really sincerely mean it is an investment into your heart, into your mind, into your soul, into your capabilities, into everything that you could possibly be. And I've actually decided something tonight. Uh, and, and this is gonna come as a surprise to you, Rebecca, but I'm adding another bonus to this. I'm going to give anybody who buys a coaching package, I'm going to give you an hour with my psychic. I'm going to gift that to you because I'm going to read you a text that I got today from a woman who got a coaching package and I set her up with my psychic. She said, uh, so she sent a message to both me and her and she said, hello, Dina and Chantal. Well, uh, I seriously doubted this part of the reading but the short, lovely man from Guelph, been seeing him for two weeks and he's pretty much everything he told me he would be. Uh, I never in a million years imagined that I would meet this type of person, but you know, here it is. So I really want to just, I, I want the success story. I love the success story. I love, I love walking you through this journey of the tumultuousness that you're experiencing at this point and getting you like just giving you this cool 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 glass of water on your brain and soothing you and cooling you down and getting you into this place where everything just settles and things start lining up like the girl who read no more assholes started doing the work inside and then showed up at it at a public event but it was just two people, her and the one she was supposed to be with. I want to put you on that path. I want to get you out of the dating scene that is so frustrating, that is so, that makes you angry. You know, Stephanie was uh, telling me about how sometimes she retaliates against some of the trolls that are out there that are just trolling for sex. And, and when she realizes it, sometimes she kind of like throws it back in their face. But this back and forth of negativity that can go on, I want it to stop for you. I want life to get easier, which it does when you're in the right relationship because of all the support that you get. And I want you to feel super positive and super loved and super uplifted instead of constantly being dragged down by people that don't care about who you are. All they care about is what they're going to get from you. I'm going to read some of these comments because I had just been going off like crazy. <laughs> uh, Rebecca, we've been getting at some questions. Um, yeah. So I was going back and forth with all I all I see is I um, is what their name is listed as. So she was asking, well, she, yeah, she was asking about um how to start dating again she was married for 26 years she was saying that it's hard for her to meet people one of the things she thinks she needs to do is uh go to another city to meet people um and we didn't get into that a lot but she also said she's irritated with men so we were kind of diving in <clears throat> excuse me into that a little bit yeah um so I, I i did like a bunch of posts where i was like defining guys versus men and chances are you're not getting irritated with men. Chances are you're getting irritated mm -hmm. with guys. Um, and I don't want you to lump men into the same category because they really are a different breed. And by really clarifying the difference between guys, you know, selfish short-term thinkers and men, generous long-term thinkers, I want, I'm empowering you to drop the guys a lot faster because when your energy is focused 
at a certain place, right? So right now your energy, a lot of you, your energy is focused on guys. And that's what's filling up your vision, really. It's, it's, it's just, it's filling up your head. It's filling up your world. And and you, you kind of keep focusing on that. And so what we focus on, right? So remember we talked about meditation. We talked about clarity. And what that does is it fine tunes your antenna and it shifts your focus. So I want to shift your focus off what you don't want because the more you're thinking about these things that you don't want, the more you're allowing that in, the more you're responding to it. And this is why I said to Stephanie the other day, like just don't even respond to it. Just let it go. Because the faster you let that go, the faster it's out of your world, out of your orbit, out of your energy, the more you are allowing the goodness mm -hmm. to come in, right? So all of that stuff is negative, but we want the goodness that the men bring. And the guys, they're not bringing goodness, they're taking goodness, right? They just want what they want when they want it. And they're not interested in reinvesting. Whereas the men are the ones who are looking for a woman to invest in, hoping she will invest back. So by not investing any energy in guys, now you are freeing up your energy. So now you have an abundance of energy. And men, again, they have this calmer mind. They're a little bit more fine-tuned than we are at this point if we're not meditating. And so when they can pick up that there's an abundance of energy. Men carry abundance with them, right? Like I say, like it, this is an investment because they are hardworking and they are looking for someone to work for. So now that you drop that negative energy, created an energetic space that is looking to be filled. So now you're holding some energy and you're just looking for a place to carry it to, which means you have an abundance with you. Men are abundance and like attracts like. So now they're picking up on your energy. And so now they're kind of, they're coming your way. They're coming in your path. So when you stop paying any attention, not one iota to guys, it's a low level response, delete. Do you want a relationship? Uh, well, delete. When there is no more energy directed towards guys, and now you have this abundance of energy to give now you're going to start meeting the men. So again, I'm going back to what you said. You're not being annoyed by men. You are being annoyed by guys. Well, kind of to go along with that too, and this is really short. One of the ways I always put that when I talk to friends, people that I coach and everybody else is you're blocking your blessings because your whatever you are focused on, like you're talking about is going to show up in your body language and your actions and how you present yourself, what you say. And if you're kind of darting back and forth between things, then you're going to be blocking whatever real you really want to channel in because everything else is not going to be aligned in alignment with it. Um, but yeah, blocking your blessings is what that does all day, every day and not just with dating and men, but with anything else too right yeah um and i do want to make a point that we also do take payment plans so if this seems like like a big lump sum up front don't worry about that because we can cut it down into smaller chunks and make it easier for you to get into this because we really we want you to have the success because let me tell you i fully believe in karma and i know that the energy that i help you create is energy that's just going to come back to me and i'm i'm all up for that um i am all up for goodness i love 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 goodness so here's what i do when i work one-on-one -on -one. and then rebecca i'm going to get you to talk about what it is that you're offering too okay so this is six weeks of full-on me and you um we will have weekly appointments you know don't worry if if you need to skip a week it's okay you know we, we can extend stuff um so we have our weekly appointments and the weekly appointments are very important in the beginning because i get you into a flow right so first i get you meditating and i get into the science of stuff i get you changing your brain structure there's something that you're going to understand about yourself and your reactions and the ways that you think and the ways that you feel you can have a lot of light bulb moments and i'm going to give you one right now we have a naturally negative brain mother nature designed us to survive in the wild 
Now we didn't always have these buildings and these hospitals. We used to be cavemen and cave women a couple hundred thousand years ago, which meant that if we went somewhere and there was a lot of snakes, we had to remember that location and not go back. If we ate something and it gave us diarrhea and a stomach ache, we had to remember what that food looked like or what that non-food looked like and not eat that particular thing again. So the negativity was retained, whereas the positivity was let go because you know as well as I do, there's only so much room inside of our heads. And so positive things were enjoyed in the moment, but then released and not kept as memories. But the negative things were kept as memories. So we were designed with a brain that contained, retained negativity. Here's the thing. Our world has evolved. We are much safer now. We don't have to remember dangerous locations like we used to. We don't have to remember what not to eat like we used to but our brain is still the old caveman brain. So one of the things that I get you doing is actually changing your brain structure. So I know some of you have heard the word neuroplasticity. Your brain is like plasticine. You, you're not gonna change the size. Your, your, your head isn't gonna increase in size, but you can create more gray matter inside of your brain, which means you can literally create more brain. You can change your brain. And that is what I help you do is change your brain structure because where does all of your perception come from? Your sight is perceived through your brain, your nose, your ears, all of this happens, all of your sensory, everything feeds up into your brain and then you perceive the world. So I change the way that you perceive the world, which means I bring forward a more positive you and I fully believe in infection. Now my husband and I, we fought for 10 years I changed my brain and then I infected him. I didn't change him. I simply said, I'm a different person and I'm going to keep moving forward and changing as a different person. And if you don't keep moving forward with me, I will leave you behind. And ladies, let me tell you, the man who loves you will follow your lead. I keep saying this in my writings. I turn women into emotional leaders. I make your relationship work because I help you learn how to function within yourself. And then I help you learn how to function within a relationship. This stuff that I teach you is game changer stuff. It is life altering stuff. You are not the same person after I'm through with you. And, and I love the effects because I see, I see, I feel it, right? Because I, I plug into you and I feel the weight come off. I feel you relaxing. I feel you getting happier. And then because you are now more focused and directed and clear, you put that person in your path. And then I teach you how to make it work with them. I teach you how to reel him in. I teach you how to get him to miss you. I teach him how to get him to a place where he is all in. And then I teach you how to make that work so you don't bounce right back out. Oh, we chatting with Rebecca. Uh, Kent and Deborah right now. Nice. Load off my shoulder. Yes, Deborah. <laughs> to load off your shoulder. She chatting with a guy right now. He says you seem super nice. Really love to get to know you. Build a solid friendship to start. That's a, yes. You know, and this is it. This is that's what's like a man, Deborah. I got to tell you. Um, love to get to know you and build a solid friendship. This is very much man language, right? Guys will be like, um, you know, again, they want to dazzle you, right? So, yeah, you seem really fantastic. They might say, I want to get to know you and take you out and show you the world and make things amazing and just blow your mind and blow your socks off, right? So it's pew, 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 pew. like they're setting up the fireworks like crazy. So look at the language, build a solid friendship. Mm -hmm. to start right and and did he say that be a robust foundation are those the words she put that in quotes which means i think he said that what a beautiful thing to say i would definitely pursue that definitely use a no kissing for three months rule who here has decided that they're going to use a no kissing for three months rule can i get anybody to comment on that um i would love to see if i've convinced anybody that this is what they're going to do 
and uh, I actually I saw somebody said that they've they're already in it they're already doing it with somebody and that the person has agreed to it which is amazing um, because I'm a man who I'm visually attracted to but doesn't seem to work out that way uh, Stephanie here's the thing about looks have you heard the quote beauty's in the eye of the beholder that's exactly what that is about is when you fall in love beauty is created when I first met my husband I had zero physical attraction for him and when I say zero I really mean zero there was no physical attraction but the more I got to know him the more I saw the person that was inside, the more I realized his character. And then when I noticed that he was confident, there were so many things that slowly started to click into place. So, if, you know, and again, like like that visual attraction, right? What you're talking about is the spark, the va va boom, that like, ooh, that little jump in your stomach that, you know, the moment you see them because there's just something about how they look that gets you. Make it about who they are and, and tell yourself, I'm going to find someone who is amazing, not I'm going to find someone that I'm attracted to. Attraction is easy. You were designed to procreate. Mother Nature made us as animals who are designed to procreate. I'm going to put a concept in your head, okay? So your body is composed of DNA. So Darwin's theory of evolution means that your DNA can actually modify the exterior body in order to adapt to its environment and continue its survival. DNA is like... Men in Black, I think it was Men in Black 2, where there was the um, alien that got killed in a coffee shop, and then he's in the morgue, and then the face pops open, and you see the little alien driver inside his face. DNA is an alien driver inside of your body. It is driving your body around, and it's going, I want some more of me. I want more of me. So it is literally, this is your drives and impulses. Your drives and impulses is your DNA wanting to procreate itself. And so attraction is nothing more than the procreation process in the beginning, right? Like I am extremely attracted to my husband. We've been together for 14 years. Guys, I am eye humping him on a daily basis. Um, I, I humped him today. Um, we had a moment where he was like doing something and I go, I go, are, are you seeing me I hump you? And he's like, yeah. Um, Literally on a daily basis, I look at him and I feel this surge of attraction. I am extremely, extremely attracted to him. I want to kiss him all the time. I want to hold him all the time. Uh, I just, I love looking at him. Is there anything about how he looks that I just don't love? But in the very beginning, that was there. It came with time. It came as I fell for who he was as a human being. It came as I realized what a good, good, good person this was. I'm sorry for all the other people out there, but I have yet to meet a better human being than my husband. Like, that is how big he is to me. That is how amazing he is to me. And when you say, I'm looking for someone that I'm attracted to, you're not giving yourself an opportunity to fall for a person that you can fall in love with and then become attracted to. When you fall in love with who they are as a human, you will fall in love with how they look. That just is going to happen. But don't put the cart before the horse. Don't go for attraction first and then hope to fall for the human. Oh, yay. It makes total sense. Love the idea. Well, then you give it a try. Um... Oh, Stephanie, have fallen for a guy that I was not attracted to. So, Stephanie, so once you did fall for him, did you find that you were more attracted to him at that point? Um, let's see. Hard to have a spark conversation. That's that's true. You know, here's the thing. So, Stephanie says, sometimes it's hard to have a spark in conversation with men. Um, initially, right? And this is why I say open yourself up to the slow burn. So, Initially, 
Um, here's a gender difference. We process and use about 20,000 words a day. Men process and use about 5,000 words a day. So the conversation in the beginning might be more difficult because they're just not as wordy as we are. And this is one of the reasons why I say your first few dates are best if they're walking dates. Because when you sit across from each other, I call it interview style. So when you're basically having an interview, instead of a moment in time where you can comfortably get to know each other, you're really putting each other on the spot. Like, he's going to be nervous because the reason why he's sitting across from you is because he wants to see where this is going to go. And the more into you he is, it, the harder it is to make that first impression because now his mind is kind of going, oh, what do I do? What do I say? How do I do this? Can I get her? You know, like I might impress her. What is she going to think of me? Is she going to have another day? Blah, 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 right? So if, if he's more introverted, right, this will be a little bit more difficult. Um, and so give him an opportunity to sort of peel back the layers. Um, and give it time, give it that slow burn. Uh, Sherry, you gotta sign out. Um, so guys, uh, we're gonna have this offer up for uh, some more time. How much time do we have on that? Um, and I'm adding the appointment with my psychic who is freaking amazing. Um, and so if anybody wants to take us up on that, uh, this is going to be up for some more time still. And you can also email me at info at canadasdatingcoach.com. What's the time? Oh, God, God. Yeah, it's time to go, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> holy moly. Um, okay, so a little bit of info going forward. Uh, I, Rebecca, we have to talk about um, doing some more of these uh, webinars together. We're going to come up with a schedule. Yeah. Um, we're gonna let you know uh, about upcoming webinars. We're gonna we're gonna make sure that you are in the know for upcoming webinars. Uh, I'm actually gonna be setting up a schedule for doing weekly webinars. They're gonna be shorter webinars. They're gonna be like half hour webinars. I'm also gonna be doing weekly podcasts. Um, so if you're not already signed up to my mailing list on canadasdatingcoach.com, uh, I encourage you to go over there and sign up for the mailing list there. You're actually gonna get a free book. Uh, when you do that, which is Fake Love You Not Apply, which is this book right here. So this is all about um, knowing the different types of wrong guys that are out there. So there's the posers and losers, the scammers and the predators. Uh, this book is gonna help you really see them from a mile away so that you don't get caught up with that. And I want you to think really long and hard about this uh, I want you to think about how long you want to stumble in the dating world for. And I want you to want to invest in yourself. I want you to get into that relationship sooner rather than later. Guys, this, it's, it seems like, you know, might seem like a lot of money, but it is very little money when you compare it to what you're going to get when you get into that right relationship. And frankly, the monetary value, even that is going to come back to you mm -hmm. probably old. Like, Rebecca, you know this as well as I do. When you're with the right man, what he has is yours, and what he brings in is there to lift you up. Yeah. It, is, it is your dream come true. Like, if you're looking for that, that knight in shining armor, this investment, this, this $2,000, gets you there and then pays you back. So think about this, okay? And I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna let you guys know when the next webinar is coming up and we're gonna hit some more topics. Um, send me some emails, let me know what, what other topics you'd like to see me tackle because I'm gonna be doing a lot of talking and I wanna talk about the kind of stuff that you are interested in. And we are gonna pop off now I'm sending you so Bye. much love, so much love. And I will see you at the next webinar and I'll see you in the ether.
Good night, you guys. Have a good sleep, okay? And do some meditation. Let me know how many minutes you do. <laughs> oh, Stephanie says, what website? CanadaStateAndCoach.com, Stephanie. I says, thank you. You're so welcome. And thank you. You're welcome, And Sherry, thanks, ladies. I have to sign up. Yes. Stephanie. You're welcome, Stephanie. You're welcome, Mom. Mom. Kim. Hug Chantal. Hugs Kim. Love you too, Stephanie. Okay, good night, you guys.